Hello and welcome to Top Linux Tech. In this video, we will discuss about how to secure your SSH server. SSH or Secure Shell is a remote server protocol that enables you to securely connect to your Linux server, while the data transfer remains encrypted between the host and the client. Even though it is considered the safest and the most secure method to manage your server, Simply leaving the default settings makes it open to several vulnerabilities, which may compromise your security such as running the default configuration that allows the SSH daemon to listen on port 22. This is insecure because this is the port that will be scanned in the beginning by any skilled attacker, therefore you should always set the daemon to listen on a different port other than 22. Also, leaving the system with the root account exposed with easy-to-guess password is also at risk and it is one of the most common mistakes that caused many servers to be compromised. Every time when you spin a virtual machine or server from any public VPS cloud provider, it will be quickly scanned by automated bots and looking for a way to find a vulnerability inside your system by probing the root account first and running a brute force dictionary attack. These malicious bots have a list of all known networks that belong to public service providers and are under constant scan for victims. The best way to secure your SSH server is by generating public and private key pairs to be used for establishing connection. This way only the user who has the private key can access the server and the default way of logging in with root or any user account by specifying the username and password will be disabled. We can achieve this by using one of the following cryptographic algorithms to generate our secure keys. We can use RSA, which is an old algorithm used widely in the past and even today. We can still use this algorithm, however, it is getting very old as of this moment, and choosing another one is advised. The recommended key size to be used with this algorithm is either 248 or 4096 bits. These are long keys, and therefore they are one of the slowest. Next on the list we have the DSA, or the Digital Signature Algorithm, which is also an old one which was used by the US government in the past and comes with the default key size of 1024 bits. You should definitely not use this algorithm today. One of the newer algorithms that you can use is ECDCA, a new and more secure standard that uses elliptic curves with key sizes of 256, 384 and 521 bits. The keys are smaller, but are much faster and mathematically more secure than the long ones used by the RSA. It is recommended that you use this algorithm today, as it is the new standard. Finally, there is a new algorithm called ED25519, which is also very good, however, it is not that widely adopted yet and it will not work with OpenSSH servers older than version 6.5. Now, with all that being said, let's switch to one of my servers and demonstrate how you can quickly and easily secure your SSH server. Here, from my terminal, I'm going to create an SSH key pair with the SSH keygen utility. This utility should be installed by default on any Linux system. So we execute the command ssh-keygen and first we specify the type of the key by adding the dash "-t", option. We can press tab twice to see the other available options and here I'm going to choose the ECDCA type which should be suitable in most cases and also I'm going to add the dash "-b", option to specify the size of bits. And finally, the dash F option to specify the name and the location for where I want the file to be saved, which I will put into my .ssh folder. Now immediately you'll be asked to enter a passphrase. You can either specify one 
or you can just press enter to go without a passphrase. Not using any passphrase may be more convenient for you since you will no longer need to enter a password or the passphrase when you connect to your SSH server. The whole process will be easy. However, this might be dangerous in case if someone manages to steal your SSH key. And then they will be able to log in easily without a password. So therefore, it is recommended that you create one. And here, if I switch into my .ssh folder, I see that both the private and the public keys have been generated. And now it is time to copy the public key to the server that we want to access. For this, we will use the SSH copy ID utility, which also should be installed by default on your Linux system. So let's execute ssh-copy-id and then add the dash i option to specify which identity file or public key to use and then we type in the login details of the server. Once we enter the password we will see that the key has been added or stored on the server and this goes usually in the .ssh folder of the user account specified for the login. We can check inside this folder and examine the file to verify that everything went correctly. And there is our public key, added inside the authorized keys file. Now, let's configure the SSH service to use the new security settings. So we edit the file, slash etc, SSH, sshd underscore config and the first thing we need to do is change the port number. So uncomment the line where it says port and specify the one that you want to use. In this case I'm going to use 9622 as the port number. Next we move down here where it says permit root login and we disable the root account by changing the option from yes into prohibit-password. Also, we move further down where it says password authentication and completely disable the password logging method by changing the option into no. Finally, we save the file and restart the service. We can use the netstat or the ss command to verify that the ssh daemon is listening on the new port. We terminate the server session and now we try to log in again on the default port and as you can see the server refuses the connection. Now let's try to log in on the actual port. And we get permission denied error because the server no longer allows us to log in with any username and password. So we will have to specify the private key file that we want to use in order to match the public key on the server. So we run the command again, but this time we add the dash i option and we tell the SSH client which private key we want to use. And next we are being asked to enter our passphrase that we use during the key generation. And once we press enter, we can now finally log into the server. If we examine the authentication server log file, we will notice that someone attempted to log into our server with the root account, and also we will be able to see the offending IP address. If you are on a Red Hat based system such as CentOS, as in this example, it is very likely that you'll have the SC Linux policy enabled, which will prevent you from changing the default port, and you might receive an error when you restart the SSH service such as this. In this case, you will have to modify the SC Linux policy to accept the new SSH port that you defined. So first, make sure that you have the SA Manage program installed on your server. It usually comes with the package policy core utils-python-utils. 
And when you have that one, simply execute the command. sc manage port dash a for add dash t for type ssh underscore port underscore t dash p tcp the specified port number and press enter. Next, simply add the new port as the firewall rule with the firewall-cmd command, make it a permanent rule and then reload the firewall. If you are using Windows 10, you can either use the new Windows terminal or you can use an SSH remote program such as PuTTY and PuTTYGen. And this is how you secure your SSH server. In another video, we will discuss about how to add a secure firewall and also how to configure some intrusion prevention systems. So stay tuned to this channel. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to comment, like, share and subscribe. And I thank you for watching.